Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, do you feel strange today? I feel strange every day, Nathan. Oh, yeah, that's me too, actually. Um, the reason I ask, I do a lot of other things besides just play tabletop games. I know you do too. You know, I play a lot of video games, I, uh, I watch a lot of television shows, I watch a lot of movies, I do stuff. We consume various forms of media. I started thinking about how it relates back to game design, or can actually inform game design. Uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced that yourself. Sometimes, um, depending on different stuff, I usually get ideas and thoughts from media that I'm consuming at times. So I, I guess that's starting to happen to me, and it's scary. And I don't know what to do with all of those feelings. It's a big think, scary world out there, Nathan. It is a scary world out there. So, recently, I played a game called Life is Strange. Pretty sure a lot of people know what that is. You familiar? Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Life is Strange. I have not played it, which is not as strange as Life is Strange, but I am familiar with the game and the idea and concept. Uh, it's a narrative game. I know that those aren't necessarily your, your preferred uh, style of gaming. I occasionally play them because I, I like the change of pace, but uh, it's actually a pretty good one. Interesting enough that I actually wanted to play Before the Storm as well, so I played that directly afterward. That's a whole different kettle of fish, actually. But something that you may know about the original Life is Strange is that there is a mechanic inside of it where you um, control time. You actually manipulate time with your mind? Is it your mind or your hand? Yeah, with a spiral. Yeah. That, that you, with the spiral, there's definitely a spiral involved. I could never tell if, like, Max can actually do it with her hand or if she's doing it with her mind or if there's a combination, but they didn't really explain that. I guess that really wasn't the point. <laughs> hand wavium. Yeah, hand wavium. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's the new Harry Potter spell. Hand wavium ho rosa. But that is, like, a mechanic that she can actually use. They use it in very interesting ways. Uh, not just to, like, redo decisions that you maybe decide you didn't want to do, but also so that you can get to places that you previously couldn't go. So one of the best examples is actually where they're trying to break into the principal's office. Not really a big spoiler, folks, but they make a, a, a small explosive device to get into it because they don't have a key, uh, which of course sets off the alarms immediately, but then what Max can do is she can go through the other side of the door uh, and then rewind time to before the point where they actually explodified the door. And so now she can unlock it from the inside. I wish I could do that. It would be something. That would be uh, one way to heist a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just you're going to go the, the, like, the fast and, and hard way of doing it. You know, the, the straightforward stick them up, we're robbing the bank. And then after you get into the actual vault, you just, like, rewind time, <laughs> and it's like, no one knows I'm even here. They had some interesting things that, the, that they could do with that. But it also allows you to just go back and say, I, I didn't like what I did there. Maybe I want to change it before you move on to the next set piece. And I started thinking about how tabletop gaming works, because you've played your fair share of, like, role-playing games in, in pen and paper form. Much more than me. I mean, not lately. Lately, you've definitely got me beat. But over the years, yeah, yeah, cumulatively, I have. But in all of the years that you've played, have you ever had the opportunity to actually go back and change things that happened in your game? I mean, the last campaign I actually ran dealt with time travel type stuff. And really? On a different... It wasn't like... Oh, we're going to go back a day or so. It was halt. I, I've explained it on the show, I think, before mm. many, many shows ago. I had taken the, them in the present day, and they had to go to fix the issue in the past. So they, had to, mm. they went to this island, and then their future past selves had to give them the item that they were looking for to be able to go to the past to get the item. Mm. So it was a whole, um, I forget what that one is, uh, a bootleg paradox, I think, is that one? Bootstrap. 
Bootstrap. You're thinking Thank bootstrap you. Bootleg, yeah. bootleg paradox. <laughs> yeah. Bootstrap. So, um, <laughs> That's so a like we're, heist. where uh, Link in the Ocarina of Time learns that song from somebody else and then yes. goes to the past and then teaches them that song. Mm-hmm. I had that kind of scenario planned for that game. Ah. So where they need this item and they get this item, but they're not really sure where it comes from and they go to the past and then they find the item and hopefully they were going to realize they need to take the item and send it to themselves in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've done stuff like that um, where yeah. you can kind of manipulate them and, and it's interesting because video games you can do it really well because you have these scripted sets of what happens and what you, it's cause and effect you have those and they're scripted right. uh, tabletop for instance it's a little bit harder because it's not scripted so the amount of things you can do if you go to the past that can affect the future mm-hmm is infinite there's you can do anything you want essentially in tabletop it got me to thinking though that like as far as mechanics go i really have never seen a mechanic that would let you actually take back decisions or rewind events that have happened so we haven't seen a prince of persia sands of time uh exactly. rpg on the table got it exactly um, we have not seen that happen oh but boy that would be amazing I want to play that. I totally. I, I think one of the closest things uh, offhand that I can think of that would be similar to that would be forcing a reroll. Okay. Um, that's like an instantaneous thing, not like a, oh we're going back a couple hours. It's like oh you made a roll. No, I have time magic or whatever. You got to reroll that. That never happens. You reverse it and do it over. Yeah, because I would imagine that the problem with actually building a role playing game around that is that the further back you go, the more things you have to keep in mind, uh, especially for the storytelling aspect. If I say that I want my character to be going back like a week in time, well, that's going to change like everything else that's happened, you know, in that last week. And so then you have the like the butterfly kind of effect going on (laughs) with that whole thing. I don't know if it's the kind of thing that you could even in a tabletop setting at least, that you could implement as a mechanic. It's not like you can, like, drop a save point or a node I, in the game and say, we can go back to this. I okay. think you could, okay. but I don't think you could build a game itself around it mm. unless, unless, unless you made the game very specific, having it played like a campaign setting or like a module. Okay. okay. So you've got this story that is scripted, and you've got okay. day one, here's a page, day two, here's a page, etc. So mm. you've got like like seven days before, and then you've got everything chunked out by like days that things happen. So it's written like on a timeline. If you did it like yeah. that, you could do it, but you'd okay. have to have it, um, it'd be a lot. Okay. It'd okay. be like, here's day one, here are all the options you have for day one, choose it, and then day two all the options day two has that would be very intricate at that point because it would be the butterfly effect you start with day one and it's got Mm -hmm. these branching options that you can choose from and each one leads to its own path so if you're picturing this okay day one then you got day two has two different options and then day two on each option has two options day two three on then you know it's just this branching tree that gets way way more complex the further out you go I think that could be done. I don't yeah. know how efficient it would be to make it. I think it would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. it would be interesting. Um, mostly because I'm thinking, like, you, you'd have to be a somewhat limited in even even that kind of a, a mode. Like, I, if we had gone from, like, day one, day two, day three, and then I all of a sudden kind of go, oop, I need to go back to one, then you're sort of overwriting the other things that had happened on two and three. Right. It's especially hard, I think, with multiple players, because then the events, the, the, the causality of the one person doing it has to then translate over to everybody else that's in that story. I think that's the reason why when you see, like, narrative video games, the episodic ones... It's only one, one player. One player, and then the world around them changes. So basically, it's a you, you can imagine the tabletop equivalent is you just have the one player character and then basically the GM that's handling everything else that's going on. 
if you had like two or three characters, you can imagine like, okay, well, what if like the uh, the Telltale series, right, were uh, multiplayer games? <laughs> like I th- I that's think, just a cluster. <laughs> I think cool. the way you'd have to manage every tabletop is with mm. multiple players. They'd all have to be linked uh, to something or to each other, so that if oh. one person, if you decide you want to go back to day one, if you use this ability, all of you go back. Yeah. Well, and if you in the fun part there is you could potentially make it a part where you don't all have to agree, but if one person uses stability, it happens for all of you because you're linked in the continuity of the timeline or whatever. Yeah. So no matter the choices the other two had made, for instance, if it's a party of three, it's you and two other people. So mm-hmm. they're okay with these, and you're like, oh crap, we fucked up. Mm-hmm. I want a do over. Everyone's got to do a do over now. Yeah. Because you decided that you it's it's the weighing the risk reward kind of there and it could make the other players mad at you for instance if you're like dude i did so good or it would just create a whole different set of storytelling from that too Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, that's what i was starting to wonder about like you have to still have almost a focal point that the whole party has to get around uh that sort of makes you a collective similar to how like a, a narrative game runs though even in life is strange like when you would make those choices and and you started to backtrack a bit and try to do you know do a do-over or take your additional information and go down a path that wasn't available before once you're done with that scene those choices are permanent you don't go back to it after that and so i could see it being a lot easier to make something in that vein you might even be able to do that kind of thing in a regular RPG, like you, I could imagine, like even in like a, a Dungeons and Dragons kind of style thing, or Warhammer, or any of those, where you say, "Okay, here's the scene that we're in right now. We don't know where you go past this, but in this scene, if you needed to, you know, wind back because you have the magical wind back of fire, that's the, time the new item, the wind back of fire, wind back of fire." Yeah, the wind back of fire. It's a legendary artifact. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say right now, we don't want to bring Warhammer into this because Warhammer already has time travel as a thing. Oh, I didn't get that far into the. No, lore. not 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 that game that you're playing. Okay. Um, in in the lore, it it the yeah. warp is a real space time disturbance mm-hmm. kind of deal. Um, yeah, you can go forward and back from the time in the warp. It doesn't really care. It it's basically just this doesn't take place in real time Mm. and uh, you don't always come out when you're supposed to oh okay it's uh it's it's like navigating a drunk drunk time tunnel uh one of the okay so (laughs) it's awesome the long and the short of it is like there's this one piece of lore bit somewhere that i read it was like essentially uh the warp is harsh you have to have a good navigator to get to where you're going to get through it because it's what lets people go through interstellar distances Mm. Um, it's not FTL. It's using the warp. Um, gotcha. It's a psychic okay. maelstrom of the hell. It's a hellscape. Okay. Um, Sounds but right. like so. The, the issue with the warp is like if you have a fleet that goes into the warp to go to a planet that's in need of help, they can either sometimes arrive before they're even needed, years in advance, or okay. they can arrive so far after they were needed that the place is just a wrecking ruin of death. Oh, so okay. it's it's finicky. Right. It's finicky. It's uh, uh, in one of the books that I read. It was um, oh mm. god, I don't remember the time scale, but like they sent this ship into the warp to see what would happen without the shielding around it, oh. and it came back out sixty real seconds later. It came back out about sixty real seconds later, and the entire ship was all rusted pit. Mm. It was it was like decrepit, and the crew that was on it was like, "Yo, where you been?" We we got mm-hmm. stuck in the warp for like I don't remember six months or something like that. Oh. Like it's been like sixty seconds. Like not for us, it hasn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean I can get that. Like forward travel is a little easier to deal with than the backwards travel. Yeah. Uh, in general, but um, it must have sucked to be in that uh, the warp for six months though. Uh yeah yeah it's a hellscape a literal hellscape. Great, I yeah. want to visit. They you, know those, the, you know those demons mm-hmm. you fight in that game? Yeah. Those are yeah. warp demons. They live in the warp. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They seem approachable. Yeah. I need to, <laughs> I need to have some more of those in my life. 
Um, okay, but it does sound like in the that's that's in the lore itself. Like the the actual time frame is not necessarily something that you can manipulate on any kind of a a massive scale. No. Okay. Yeah. Um. So so that's not exactly what I'm talking about. I guess. That's uh, you're throwing right. a coin into a well and trying to figure out which one of those ripples you landed on. Oh, all right. That's oddly philosophical for yeah. the show. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that it sounds like uh, if you got drunk one night and you got into the TARDIS and <laughs> you just you said I could figure out these controls. <laughs> And you just and you just went off into the universe uh, and uh, and hope that you didn't break it. Um, the TARDIS or the universe? Both. There. Yeah, I would totally break both. Yes, you, you break would. the universe first, and then the TARDIS, kind of as part of the universe, goes along with it. Kind of has to happen that way. Yeah, I think that you have to be a little bit uh, smaller, I suppose, in scale when we're talking about actual time manipulation. In a game, but I've had my times where I've played a character and I was like, mm, I just didn't like how that went. I just didn't like the result of that. And I guess there is this other problem that you would come across too, where if I could just keep taking back decisions left and right, then the consequences of my actions don't have nearly as much weight to them. Right. Like, I'm because... no longer thinking about. You know, like, like I don't I throw caution to the wind. Like, I'm just going to go shoot things. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just rewind in time. Because, you know, people would do that. Yes. Players Absolutely. would totally do that <laughs> every five seconds. 100%. I would just go shoot the king. It's, I just, it's, I, it's, we do that in video games as is. Oh, yeah, because you want to see what happens. I'm go I don't know what happened. Drop a save, kill this guy. Oh, that was lame. Okay, reload. He's still alive. The thing that I've always wondered about from the very start of this show, something that I had always asked myself was, why don't tabletop games have save points? And I know that that's the reason why, but let's assume that you could do that and it was an agreed upon thing before major battles or before you went and tried something. Like if you, if you made an agreement with the GM, essentially and with the rest of the crew and we all said okay here is where we are putting like we're actually boop putting down a save point we are going to try something it may not work if it doesn't work can we revert to this point does that seem fair if everyone's in agreement depending how you do it i think it would have to be a limited number of times you were able to do it or you had to earn it kind of like fate points for instance mm. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm thinking this out right now, and it's like if you had like your fate points that a lot of games have, um, mm -hmm. and you made it so those were things you could actually physically put like a pin here. I'm saving here in this game mm -hmm. as a party. We can go back to this point again. The only issue there is the campaign playstyle. I think would be difficult first. Like so, if like. The DM is winging it. That's hard. You can't yeah. really go. I'm putting a save point here because, like, uh, I don't really remember. I didn't have notes. I'm not exactly sure where that was. That's hard. You'd have to have a very structured playstyle for the game for like a campaign and a module that you could go back to that point before you did that boss fight. So you're you're still thinking that you'd almost have to do it in almost that same episodic fashion as as Life is Strange itself you it wouldn't necessarily have to do episodic but you couldn't do like uh, you couldn't just have a gm that's winging it you'd have to have a very story driven game you have to have a framework you do to start with okay. Bec because otherwise you go on popping this down and then you go back you play three sessions the things that you the the leads you chased didn't turn out the way you wanted to so you want to go back three sessions ago and it's like all right who kept the notes i think you may have to put in the limitation there similar to how you had the episodes, or you were talking about the episodes before, that would have to be by session. Like, you would have to say that, like, the session itself is almost the episodic part, and if we're going to revert back, we have to do it day of. We can't, 
we can't go back to like um, four sessions ago. I, I don't think that's necessary though, because what happens no? if you go and plop down a save point at the beginning of the session, and then you go okay. to the end of the session, and you go, "Cool, we're reverting to that last fate point I plopped down at the beginning of the session." Yeah, and then you go, "Cool, next session's the same thing." Then, mm-hmm. uh, but instead of that, you could just go, "All right, we're plopping down at the beginning of this," you know this day the session where we are in the in the in the module so you could put a bookmark there for instance yeah and then you could go several sessions later and you could just go we're going to go back to that bookmark because this has not panned out how we wanted it to and then right. in in this sense you literally have like a bookmark and you can go back to where you were so i'm getting the idea that like the idea of reverting or or saving or anything it's not out of the realm of possibility it's just not something that's easily implemented as a mechanic. Right. I think the issue as as a mechanic isn't that the mechanic itself is hard. It's that you have mm. to have the framework there, as we were saying. We do need the framework from the game itself or the module itself to be able to have a narrative structure in mm. place that allows you to move between points in it. Um, yeah. And I, I think a lot of RPGs are not set up for that modules as i was i keep saying it modules and and dungeons and stuff like that are way more set up for that because they're written scenarios um but just your typical rpg setting is not typically um set up in a fashion that you can do that easily i think that the problem that you have too and it's a strength of tabletop gaming but it does end up being one of the bigger problems with something like this is when I'm, when you're playing a video game, there is a set number of options, and those are the ones that you are always going to be following through. Uh, if I have dialogue choices, I have like four or five dialogue choices, so I know that it's going to be scripted out for what those are. But tabletop doesn't work that way. You know, a player can basically say or do pretty much whatever they can come up with, and then you kind of have to wing it from there. So trying to go down those lines or, you know, reset and try to go down a different line is not nearly as well structured from the beginning. Like just from the nature of the beast, it's much harder to implement. It's not like I can say yes, no, maybe. Uh, a player can also just say, I'm not wearing pants. That can be the that can be what the player says. And then you have to think of a whole other thing that's going to the freeform nature of, you know, a tabletop RPG uh also means that it's really difficult to account for the other possibilities that come after it. So uh going back and reverting back to go down a whole different line is a whole lot more work and yeah. is very hard to actually put into like a game manual, like or or when you're actually writing up that module, right? The way you'd have to do that module, I just started to realize it. I think what we're talking about is a module that's basically set up like a choose your own adventure novel. Yeah, choose your owns are always fun. It would limit a lot of your player options because the players would have to get limited to a certain number of things they could do. But uh, if you structured it in that way. Your save points, essentially, or your rewind points, are literally just those junctions in the book that you would be reverting back to. But it would be a very different place experience, don't you think? Yeah, it definitely would be interesting. <laughs> I guess the thing I'm wondering about is, it's, it's a neat idea, it's a neat concept. I'd like to see someone try it, but you would have to have players that were prepared for that kind of experience because it would not be what they might be used to uh, yeah. if you've played any other kind of role-playing game. <laughs> right. Because it's going to be a very different experience, especially the moment where they want to do something and you're like, that's not an option. <laughs> it's just not. There has to be some amount of railroading in that. Right. in order for it to work effectively. Is that the kind of play experience that you would be able to tolerate if you were playing? If I had a good group for it, yes. Mm. If you had a group that was just full of derpiness, in it for the lulls. Uh, so I imagine if I was playing it with you, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because then it just becomes a, a, a fuck fest of... 
Oh, we're just gonna. It'll be a video game at that point. We're just gonna go and murder the whole town. Oopsies. Play just with kidding. Nathan, a fuck yeah. fest waiting to happen. <laughs> Anyone who's played with me knows. I think you'd um have to have some stipulations, like what happens if a character dies, and then you use this. Mm-hmm. That is an interesting question. Because do you do you bring them back? Are they still dead? What about if you take uh, relic items or stuff like that, like key items from a place? Do those suddenly go disappearing? There's a lot of other things aside from just the time management that go into that as well. Right, like when I was talking about the uh, the thing where they had to break into an office or something in in the game, your actual physical space can stay where you were. You're reverting back everything else that happened. Or if you uh, if you take an item, you still have that item on you, even if you reverse to the point before you actually took it in the game. Right, which so, which is interesting because it's like I'll I'll use this as an example from film Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. Mm-hmm. She goes into the temple, takes the idol, puts the sand down, and has to escape the boulder. What happens if he just kind of takes idol, puts the sand down, or just takes the idol and then reverts time? before he entered the, the temple. And you still have the idol, but is the idol still on the pedestal, too? Right, and, and that becomes... Then it becomes an uh, spiffing bra- <laughs> item duplica- <It's> par- <laughs> duplication paradox. Yeah, it becomes a paradox. You realize um, that your RPG is perfectly balanced. <laughs> I mean, the, the way you would get away around that as a paradox, if you wanted to keep that as a thing... And, and, like, if the item is still there and you have a copy of the item, the way you would obviously try to get around that is that, you know, if they occupy the same space, the fucking universe explodes. Yeah, I think that it's one of those things where if you're going to say that the object can move, then the object has to be wherever the object was. Like, if, if, if Indiana Jones, for instance, takes the idol and reverts back time, the idol has to either be where he originally found it, or the idol has to be with him. Either the object is able to move with him in that space-time continuum, or it can. It's right. one or the other. And, and, and if it, so it... So it's either you have this item and it no longer is existing where it was in mm-hmm. the time that you are now in, which is a good way to steal a lot of things and make people go paranoid that everything in their house is moved. <laughs> yes, let's do that. I can't or think. or you go back and you no longer have the object. Because otherwise, you're right. It, it would it would just be way too hard to one manage it, and and then two just keep track of it in general. So the like, question there is, which would be more fun? If you have people that are really able to track that stuff, it would be interesting, especially if if you kept going back and taking the same idol over and over again, and then trying to keep track of all the different idols, but don't you end up with, like, the the multiple universe kind of thing going on at that point? Like, there's just multiple <laughs> Indiana Jones with multiple idols somewhere in the world. It's it's the Rick and Morty um, <laughs> shenanigans. Oh, God. Um, I think I know why Rick and Morty doesn't work so well for, like, this kind of RPG. They, they yeah, don't do time they, travel, though, so it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just um, dimensional stuff. Yeah, it's just multi-dimension, infinite dimensions, which is pretty much time travel with this, essentially. At the same point, like, even then, you you could just be like, cool, so if I can reproduce this multiple times and you keep going back and grabbing it, it's like, let's say you pick up gold off the ground, and then you go back and you pick up gold off the ground, you go back and you pick up the same gold off the ground. Yeah, you're going to be wealthy. Um, Very fast. You can just spend it all and keep spending all that money but you'd have to keep track of where you spent it because like mm-hmm. what if you um spent 100 gold that you made at this one merchant and then you spent another 100 gold you made the same way so it's a duplicate of that gold and you sent it to the same merchant it's like what are the chances that 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 money comes in contact with itself and causes oh, a fucking yeah. explosion yeah <laughs> it, then then everything explosion times now, what you could do <laughs> if you wanted to have if you if you wanted to have like the multiple idols or anything like that, what you could do is say if if the idol is now occupying the same space, but Indiana Jones wants to move it, then there's actually now two Indiana Jones as well as two idols. So now there's still one Indiana Jones with that idol in in the temple where the boulder is going to be, and the other one is outside the temple. 
but we don't know what happens if that Indiana Jones that's still inside is makes it out or not. If they don't make it out. Does that mean that the other Indiana Jones? Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's Indiana Jones? <laughs> Schrodinger's Indiana Jones. We don't know if he's de- alive or dead. Schrodinger's Which one Jones? The, the one that's outside the temple or the one that's inside the see, temple? See, the now, we're, now we're getting like adventure time levels of meta here. <laughs> yes, we sure are. This is, this is, this is Jake, going to, uh, Jake and uh, Finn going to turn Prismo into Prismo. <laughs> I haven't gotten that far in the series. But... Oh, there's, there's a, there, have you met Prismo? I have not met Prismo. Prismo's great. Oh, yeah. boy. At one point, he dies, and then he activates his contingency plan, which is turns a version of Jake into Prismo, and then there's a version of Finn that has to stop the old, other version of Finn from waking him up. It's... Oh, my God. Now we're getting to, like, future man territory in <laughs> crap. <laughs> I think the simplest solution here... Mm-hmm. would just be that they can't have multiple copies it's once you go back yeah. the object is still where it was so yeah you can't go and grab other things you you can only manipulate your personal physical form with the yeah. time traveling thing could you move in could you move yourself in time in space like if this is actually an example from the game uh max is in a storm uh, a tree falls across her path and there's a boulder that rolls down and it's gonna you know she's gonna die but if she goes off to the side where the boulder isn't gonna roll uh and she can reverse time she's still where she's supposed to be she can get ahead of the boulder before it falls down uh would that work Maybe I'm trying to think because okay, we're gonna use the Indiana Jones thing still just because it works, um, mm. and it's and it's great. Okay, Indiana Jones is at the at the pedestal and he lifts mm. up the idol. Yeah, and the boulder okay. starts to fall, and then he goes, right. "Oh shit!" and he reverts time, so the idol goes back to being there, and he's still standing there, but the boulder is not. So he could make it out, but he couldn't make it out with the idol. He could move as fast as he wants, but he couldn't do it with the idol in hand. I think the issue then is is still just because you're counting objects as not moving, mm. then it's like, all right, what well, I've got my sword and my backpack and my clothing, and technically those are moving in space time with me. Yeah, you'd have to be naked at a certain point in this. And then, and then you're like, but the idol is also an object that I'm holding, so that should be able to move. It would be in space time with me. Y- you realize that we'd end up with a Looney Tunes uh, cartoon, <laughs> like where where all of a sudden you like take off like a rocket, but all your clothes are just hanging in midair. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those really fine grained details that like mechanically you don't need to think of, but then someone will question it, mm-hmm. and it's just like, oh yeah. no! If you <laughs> actually go into the minute details of how yeah. this would function. That does not function. No, it really doesn't. And you also start to realize that if you have a person who is able to move forward in time and then reverse time and be where they were, you are the fastest person. You can literally move as much as you want in no time whatsoever. Right. You can just go at, you can run the length of the world in what is to everybody else zero time. Right. And then you get peasant railgun. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you get the peasant railgun, but you are the peasant railgun. <laughs> so you're like, you. you call up your friend across the world and say, I'm going to punch you in the face. And you're like, in a million years. And you, you take that one million years to go meet your friend. And then you reverse time when you're right in front of him, but you've got a <laughs> suddenly it's, I'm going to punch you in the face. Yeah, in a million years. And suddenly you're right in front of your friend punching him in the face. But now the question is, is that even though even though you're reversing time, since you are still moving. Are you aging? Because <laughs> you might die before you get there. <laughs> that actually makes me think, though, in most tabletop gaming, your age really isn't a factor. Like, you don't usually see characters track how old they are. Um, There's... Depends how long campaigns take uh, or uh, continue for. But should, how many times have you seen, like, characters in your games die of old age? Are we counting that one guy from that game I ran that oh. gave that... that... That time, timey wimey one. So I had him go on a ship, and the captain of the ship was very much alive the first time they entered the ship. And the second time they met the captain, it was a a, a revenant, a, a skeleton of the captain that was still very much like alive. 
through just sheer willpower to complete his mission. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was very much dead. It had been over uh, like a thousand years or something like that. And then the third time they saw him, it was back to his original form, like a minute or two after they had first left the ship to find the item. So, I mean, technically, yeah, he died of old age. His body died. Mm-hmm. These are the hidden things that you wouldn't think about in it, like by trying to implement these new mechanics in tabletop gaming. It's like, yeah, you might be able to solve the problem with like the big bad guy at the end of all of this, but you will also die of a heart attack because you have you have inadvertently aged yourself to the point where you can't you can't complete the quest. You literally yeah. you just die because of time. So I think I think what this, all this discussion boils down to is that time travel like that could work as save points. Mm. Yes, it would have to be a narrative framework that is uh, built to uh, let that be a thing. Yeah, I think uh, it would be a limited quantity thing where like each player gets a fate point and they could uh, apply that where they wanted to in the story, mm-hmm. uh, and you can earn them for certain things. I assume uh, like fate points in general, and that. If you revert time, it reverts everything to where it was before, to the time you reverted to. I think you'd have to go with that. Yeah, otherwise you're going to get into some real murky situations. You're going to you're going to have a lot of issues. You're going to ha- you're going to have a lot to keep track of. If if you were if you were running a game and you thought you had a lot to keep track of before, now, <laughs> ooh boy. Let's open up 16 spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, let's open up the spreadsheets folks. That's the thing that people love the most about tabletop gaming. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets? Oh yeah. I mean... Absolutely. It's, we call it Microsoft Excel the game. <laughs> Enjoy. Here you go, folks. We call it Microsoft Excelsior. <laughs> That's perfect. I can't wait for the Microsoft Excelsior uh, to make that Prince of Persia say the time game for me. <laughs> it's great. I, I think that that was an interesting thought experiment, though. I would like to see if people could implement that mechanically, but I do feel like it's more of a story-driven narrative kind of decision that you'd have to make as players. Not that you couldn't implement it, but I, I feel like you'd almost have to just revolve the game around that. It, it would have um, to be that. It would have to be very prevalent. Mm. Either it's something you make use of, or then it becomes something that no one ever uses. It would have to be the kind of thing that you couldn't just, like, casually say, oh yeah, and by the way, time travel's a thing in this game. I mean, I would casually just throw TARDIS in and just not mention it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair fair enough. Just happen to run across a thing that says, uh, yeah, TARDIS, and then just walk away from it, see if anyone picks up on it. That would be a fun thing to try. Um, there is a Doctor Who RPG. I don't know if they actually implement time travel like that um, in the Doctor Who RPG. Now I yeah, have to Yeah, I, uh, I, I do. vaguely remember knowing it's a thing and that initiative is weird. Right, um, right. I think it's like the people who talk are go, go first in initiative. Yes. People who are taking action go second, and then, like, the people that want to do combat go third or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a big talk RPG. I, doctor, the doctors and stuff, they talk a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Time Lords are very talkative. I've learned that much from that series. <laughs> I had thought about the idea of, like, save points as a, a feature in games for probably before we actually started this show. And when I played Life is Strange and I saw the actual implementation in a narrative form of doing stuff like that, just being able to take back stuff and, and, and utilize it in different ways, I started thinking back to that, uh, like about how we could do that. And I realized we never really talked about it on the show, so well, then. now we have. Now. now we have a whole show dedicated to that one thing. That's right. And at some point, I will probably come back and talk about narrative games as a general thing, and uh, maybe some of the pitfalls and some of the things you might be able to learn from it that you could use in tabletop gaming. But that's for a different show. For now, however, uh, I think we have to do a little time travel, but we're going forward. We're going forward in time where we actually end it. Uh, Although, the fun thing about it is when people go to listen to this, it's almost like they're time-traveling. Because you might not know this, we recorded this way before you heard it. You're hearing us from the past. 
This is the past speaking to the future. Hello, future. That's right. Your lucky numbers are 5, 7, 23, 14, and... X. X is the last lucky number. Oh, X it's is a variable. Letter. Yeah. <laughs> it's a variable. Still for X. Here's your algebraic lucky numbers for the day. <laughs> Enjoy math class. Oh my goodness. This is what your al your honors algebra <laughs> and trigonometry got you. <laughs> enjoy. Alex, if uh, the folks out there enjoy honors algebra, where could they go? <laughs> Local community colleges. <laughs> okay, but if they wanted to uh, find anything Delve related, where could they go? You can go to delvecast.com. That's right. You can find everything that we do there. It's not just the podcast, although sometimes people probably wish it was. Um, but, <laughs> but, but there's other stuff on there, too. Uh, and so while you're there, make sure to click on our Patreon banner and check out some of the extras, the extended episodes, the extra bonus content that we put out over there. Uh, you can be like our shiny level patrons, actually. And thank you very much to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth, Dominic Perry, and Nick. Thank you for joining us. Also, honorary shiny level patron, uh, Drunk Paul. Yes! Thank you, Drunk who, Paul, for uh, is... helping us with the Discord channel. We're, we're a level one Discord server now, in part thanks uh, to him. That is a helpful and be at the same level as a shiny level patron. So, we thank you for that as well, because it may not be Patreon, but uh, the level one support on Discord is amazing, and we appreciate yes. that. So, he gets what he, I think that means he's what, an eye shiny. He's, he's an e shiny, something internet e related. Shiny. You, you know how, like, everybody puts e and i in front of stuff? So that oh, it's, not, it's not just a phone, it's an iPhone. Now he can be oh, eye shiny for the eye Discord, <laughs> for the eye patrons. <laughs> The patrons that have eyes? And the more eyes you have, the more patrony you are. You can give all of those eyeballs over to all of the videos and such that we have <laughs> over on the website. If you would like to follow us on social media, you can also do that on Twitter. We are on there occasionally. Not a lot, but we do uh, do, do some stuff over there. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and our show is at Delve Podcast. So check us out there. And, of course, you can find the podcast on basically every podcast app ever known to man, including, of course, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play. Find them on there. You can time travel through our archives while you're there. They never go away. There's only one option, though, is that you play the video or you don't play the video. Everything that's inside of it is the way it was originally when it was first oh, yeah. recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of videos, you can also find it on YouTube. Yes, you can. We do make a YouTube version of these over at uh, the Delvecast channel. So you go ahead and check that out as well. We do put some other videos out during the week. Nathan puts a lot of his uh, gaming stuff out there, which is mm -hmm. entertaining to say the least. That is the least you can really say about it, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's some, there's some good stuff on there. I have some uh, uh, things that are hopefully going to be coming up in the next uh, couple months that might be might be fun for people. So definitely, and uh, I've been doing stuff, but it's on my own uh, Twitch and/or YouTube channel. Yes. So I'll try and figure something out, maybe host it on the website at some point. Uh, currently, I plan on doing a complete playthrough, quote-unquote complete, we'll see how far this goes, um, of .hackgu, the last recode, mm -hmm. on my Twitch, which is just EXP Limited. Um, yes. I don't really have a streaming schedule, but I'm also, I'm taking those videos I... I did the last two were seven hours that I streamed for. Uh, you do not need to come and join me for seven hours. I would love your company, but... It's a lot. It's a lot. Most people can't sit still for seven hours. So, I, um, yeah. but you can join me, or if you want, I will be uploading them to YouTube, which is also a very long process. Yes, it certainly so, is. You have now found out what that process is like, and welcome to the party. Yeah, and you're the one doing editing on it too. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you'd like to join me for any of that, uh, I would love to have new. Uh, followers on, on YouTube or subs on YouTube or followers on Twitch. Well, I was in the process of like uh, editing together different like audio and video things. What Alex has been working on is actually doing like live plays and uh, and streaming stuff. So, so we got we got our hands in stuff now. You could sit through that those seven hour plays if you knew how time travel worked. You know, you could you could also speed them up. I'm sure that's an option. You could also speed um, them up. You know what would be yeah. fun about that though? Think about this. What? 
is if somebody watched the end of of your playthrough, right, and then went back in time to tell you how you did, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. That'd be great. You know, yeah. So so far, um, like fourteen hours of Dahag GU. If anyone wants to help me figure out how to do YouTube and or Twitch as a person, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> before before you did that too, we had also uh, done a little bit with uh, Kingdoms of Amalur. Yeah, uh, I might get back to that eventually, but I really wanted to play Dot Act. That was fun, though. I liked doing the Kingdoms of Amalur just because we had, like, an actual crew on board for that, and so we had some nice, lively discussion about yeah, that game. Yeah, no, I would love to do something like that live again as well, and I could always continue Kingdoms of Amalur, so... And hey, you know, this might finally be the opportunity that you have to see what the ending of the game is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never totally. saw that before. I have not. Well, uh, all of that is out there on the interwebs for you. Now, we're going to go back to the beginning of this episode. Actually, when I edit it, it's essentially that. To see how well we did, <laughs> and then I'll judge us to see. <laughs> Nathan's going to be abusing his time travel powers on this uh, audio file. And you know what? I started to realize that that's actually kind of what editing is, because I can go back and I can manipulate this to sound the way I wanted it to <laughs> when there it was in my head. Editing is like time travel in real life, folks. I thought you were going to say time travel for dummies. Uh, that too. It's time travel in real life for dummies. This intro, th this outro has gone on way too long, so we're going <laughs> to wrap it up. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next time, unless you come back from the future to tell us that we didn't make it. <laughs> Somebody please do that in the comments. Please do that. I can't wait. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. See ya.